Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for watching today. So today we're going over a few more rules of the Energy Bus by John Gordon. So hopefully you had some time to pick up the book or download it. It's a great, great thing. Great. It's a very easy read. So if you get some time, get it. It's one of those good, uh, you know, just sitting around, you know, you don't have to uh, really concentrate on every word. It's not really intricate. It's a little storytelling. And, and, and what I loved about it is that if you read, obviously, if you read some self-help books, some business books, some uh, listen to some or see some videos or have been in conferences and conventions to see motivational speakers, you've heard a lot of this stuff before. So you're not, uh, this is kind of all packaging up into like 10 simple rules and also reminding yourself of things that you can do to keep your life focused. So today is rule four, five, and six I'm gonna go over today. So rule number four is invite people on your bus and share your vision for the road ahead. So basically what that means is that make sure the people in your life, if you are, and I'll just go into business, if you're an individual agent, you don't have a team of agents, uh, that you manage or are collaborating with again what i said yesterday your team is your your people in your life they might not be working with you making calls with you going on appointments with you but they do affect your attitude affect your vision or affect your um your moods affect affect your time and and will eventually affect your vision so whoever and this is my interpretation of it whoever's in your life uh, most often, especially every day, if people need to be make sure they're on your bus, where your bus is going. Make sure that make sure they know you have a bus, <laughs> that you have a goal, and you have a vision, you have a plan, you have a road, you have a trip that you're going to be taking in in your professional career. If you're just going to concentrate this book and these ideas on your professional career, but Again, this is for all of life, your relationships, your business, and just your just self-help. So number four, again, is invite people on your bus and explain to them what your vision is, what you want to accomplish every day, what your goals are, what kind of uh, business you want to run as your clients. Like an example. And I've said this before in other videos, is that you got to make sure your family's on board with the time that you're going to have to put into real estate, when you're going to have to put it in real estate. And for all the agents that are watching this, but you know, my agents I've talked to, I, I understand those eight o'clock at call night, uh, eight o'clock PM, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and people in the background and family. And I've, I've had agents every, every night I'm on a phone call at that time. And someone apologizing for people in the background. I know, I I, I live it <laughs> myself with uh, with children and uh, two great dames at home, and you might hear dogs barking in the background. So same here. So, but make sure everybody knows what your vision is. Make sure that they know your time. Make sure you know what you want to accomplish, so they can get on board. And on board is to me is knowing what, where you're going and when you have to go there day to day, what, what you want to accomplish for the day. So if you're, if you're making some prospecting calls or if you're working on a transaction at six o'clock, you might not be, your dinner might be at seven, or you might not be able to take one of the kids to practice that day, or you might have to reschedule some things. If you've been in real estate a while, you've already been through things like this, but for any agent that's watching this that's new, that or in a level of business where they didn't have to juggle their life, or I see agents that have just started a family uh, and or got married or things changed in their life, and now they're like, wow, there's other people around uh, and in my life every day. I got to make sure they're on the bus. So if anybody's coming into your life, spouse, significant other, children, family, anybody who's spending more and more time with you, remember, you got to Every new passenger passenger on your bus, your life, needs to know where you're going and what your vision is. Uh, number five, don't waste your energy on those who don't get on the bus. Now, 
I, I specifically point this out uh, to agents uh, several times a week is once, you know, you might have a bad transaction, something doesn't go right, a client's not treating you well, they're not happy about something that has nothing to do with you, but you are the one, the agent on it. I always tell the agents to, to move on. Don't spend your time, energy, focus on the stuff that you, it's over, you can't control, and it affects your time and your energy with the things that are most important to you today. So what's the word I, I like to use? Dwell. Don't dwell. Don't dwell on the things that are not going to be on your bus, the people that are not going to be on your bus. Uh, that goes for people around you, but also goes for past clients. I have agents that you know get referrals, if the referrals and call their past clients, but every once in a while there's a client that just has a bad experience because of the situation with the buyer or seller or title company or mortgage company or there's so many people involved in a transaction and sometimes they take it out on anybody. Forget that client. Don't put your energy into that past client. The transaction is done and move on and don't focus on that. I've seen so many agents focus because there's a buyer or a seller uh, upset about something and they're just so they're so caring and wondering and trying to make things right and make people happy. You can't make everybody happy. So any agent watching this has been in the business a while, has many transactions or not, it doesn't matter. It's just, you might come across it after a few transactions, but had an unhappy customer because of the situation, maybe usually 99% of the time, nothing the agent did, but because of someone else involved in the transaction or what happened in their personal life during the transaction, and they're just not happy. You know, spoiler alert, there's people out there that are just not happy people. <laughs> if you haven't known about that, and they might start off happy, and they're just not happy. And, and many of you have heard me say this before when in my coaching and training and, and, and handling situations is that when you get an unhappy person, when you know you're not doing anything wrong at all, and there's nothing that you can see that should be wrong, but they're just unhappy something's going on in their personal life and should have some empathy or sympathy for those people without them telling you. Some people are just angry sometimes, but you've got to not focus on that. So if they're not on your bus every day, if you're not, you know, just even clients knowing that your bus is going for them is going to a great transaction, great customer service, make sure they get the closing, make sure everything goes smoothly. But if they're not on the bus and they, they don't want to help you with the process, move on, forget about them, move on to the next client that's going to be happy and, and appreciate what you do. So hopefully that makes sense there. And six, I like this one. <laughs> Number six is post a sign that says no energy vampires allowed on your bus. <laughs> so uh, we, some of us, and we've heard the term negative Nellies or that, is that make sure, number one, make sure you are not the energy vampire of yourself. Are you have those negative thoughts every day? Are you watching the news first thing in the morning and in a bad mood? Are you, you dwelling on something? So we could be, and, and, I, and they didn't say this in the book, this is my own twist on it, is that we could be our own energy vampires. So make sure that you have a, a sign and remember that. You can post it you know, on your mirror, on your, in your car, uh, for anybody to see, no energy vampires allowed. So I, I also, this reminds me, I'm, I'm going on another story here, is that there was another great speaker, and if anybody ever seen him, he used to uh, speak at uh, Ohio Association of Realtor Conventions when we had conventions, you know, last year and now the years before. Uh, he was a, a speaker, great motivational speaker and trainer, uh, Terry Watson was his name. And he had a great quote kind of like this is uh, his tagline was, it's not my monkey. And, and, and he would also say to people, when people came to him for problems or family or, or, or agents and problems, they always say, take your monkey with you. So what that meant by is that if someone comes in, family, friends, and has a problem and you're trying to help them with that problem, is that when they leave, take the monkey with them. Take that problem with them. Because some of us, 
it, we, we, we dwell, we, we love to help. I know there's a lot of you out there is that love to help other people. And you, if you catch yourself throughout the day or spending time dwelling on how to help other people with their problems, yes, if they're direct family, your kids, spouse, you need to help them. But set time aside for that. Don't have to dwell on it every time. You don't have to be, it's, it might be an uh, energy vampire. So sorry to bring that kind of uh, you know, whole different speaker in there, but I just want to know what's in my head and what I rem I remember is two things: is that no energy vampires allowed. A little uh, dig into my brain of what I do every day. When I know there's going to be a negative vampire uh, or a, a, a energy vampire in my day, and as a broker owner, I've negative I've energy vampires all of the time. These are handling problems, situations that I limit that. Number one, limit that. I'm not going to give people two hours of my time to hear them vent on everything. I'm going to give them a time spot to help them with their problem. These are a lot of times buyers and sellers and agents and things. So when you have someone who has a problem, put a time limit on it. Say, hey, I, I will call you at 2 o'clock. I have another appointment at 2.15. I got 15 minutes for you. So put a time limit on it. And also, when you have someone that uh, has a problem that you have to you have to help uh, uh uh, fix or make it better uh, once you've done the work to try to make it better try to forget about it and move on until and put it in your schedule when you're gonna work on it again so one thing that I see in helping agents for over 20 years I've seen agents have bad transactions I I get agents that text me call me leave me a message voicemail uh, and emails middle of the night because they can't sleep because of certain transactions that are happening and problems on happening. I know it's hard, but those are energy vampires. You can't get rid of them sometimes, but you have to limit the exposure, plan for when you try to plan for when you're going to deal with it in time so you don't take the energy away from all of the other things that you have to accomplish for the day and the people you have to talk to. Because I know it, it happens to me. If I, I sometimes catch myself, I'm like, while I'm talking to someone, I'm still thinking about that problem that we we're still working on before. I've been, after 28 years in real estate, I've done, a, in my mind, I've, I've learned a long time over experience of how to create, how to uh, uh, control that, to plan that. So if you if you have that kind of problem of dwelling, not Planning because remember, the people that have the energy vampires, the people that are having the problems, this might be the, the major problem in their life, and they want to talk about it and deal with it all day long, every day. You've got to figure out a best way to explain to them how you care, you want to help, and that you're their very important client or the other agent. You, if the other agent's giving you a problem, you got, I, I respect you, I care. I'm going to work on this. I, I'm, I just have other clients I have to take care of, and I will call you back or I will handle this at 3 p.m. today. And again, sometimes they don't take that. They want you to wipe your, clean, your slate clean. But I have also helped agents with scripts and things to say, like, Tony, what do I say to these people? And they say, no, you call this. They go, I explain to them, listen, I have other families that are buying houses right now that, that really need some of my attention today too. There's closing soon. I got to make sure their families are taken care of too. I promise this is on my priority list. I will take care of it and move on and I, I will get back to you by the end of the day or a specific time. And you compartmentalize it. You, you give them, a, 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 you explain to them, you should tell them you care and you move on. So that's my tip on how to handle energy vampires that you can't just push away and gone and they're done. You know, you don't have to worry about them. They keep on flying around until the transactions are done or until your, your, your deal with them is done or, or the, ne uh, the next part of the transaction, you don't have to deal with them anymore. So any agent that has had transactions that don't go as smoothly as they want, have had energy vampires in their life. And I just wanted to give you some ideas, some a little bit of scripts, but please, you know, I don't want to take up too much of everybody's time during this video, but reach out to me. I'm, I've got lots of experience to handle situations and emotions and talking points and how to keep people 
focused and, and give them ideas. And, you know, it doesn't always work because sometimes people just don't understand, but I'm, I love to help that. I, it's part of the things I do. I love to help my agents or any agent out there how to handle people because sometimes when you're new to real estate or just new to a situation, I'm ha have agents that call me that have been in the business 30 years ago. I've never had this happen before. How do I handle it? And I, I enjoy, it's kind of like a puzzle to me. I like, it's like, I love doing that when I'm helping people. I hate this being in those situations, don't get me wrong, but I enjoy trying to help and get it, putting it all together to try to make everybody happier or easier or smoother for everybody. So reach out to me. That's the whole point of that. Reach out to me if you need my help with those type of things. So those were uh, rules four, five, and six. And tomorrow I will be doing the next few rules. Hopefully you got a chance to get the book or read the book or read, listen to the book. Great stuff. And remember, use me as a resource if you need any more information on this or want to discuss and see how we can help your day-to-day uh, -day life too. So that's it. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow at 11. Bye-bye.